as a reminder, please add yourself to the attendees list in the uh, Google document to the meeting notes if you haven't already. I cool. think so. Great. So before we get started, as always, is there anything that is not on the agenda that people would like to discuss that we should add to the agenda? Okay. So we have events coming up. Um, so we have KubeCon, where the call for paper closes on January 8th. So this will be held at Barcelona on May 20th through 23rd. So if you intend to submit a, uh, a talk, today is the 15th. So that means you have to have your talks in by Friday. I'm not sure what time zone that they, that they expect though. So I would recommend getting it in by Thursday. We also have Mobile World Congress coming up. Um, which tends towards demos on stands and is very service provider centric. And so uh, we have ONS North America coming up and the call for papers also closes on January 21st and that'll be held in San Jose, California in April 3rd through April 5th. There, so this is also very telco, uh, very NFE centric as well. Uh, we. We also have uh, coming up uh, a upper side conferences, MPLS, SDN, NFV conference. Uh, the deadline has already passed for submitting, uh, for submitting talks, uh, but there may be some interesting things that people may learn there. And we also have Container World 2019. Uh, does anyone know what, the, what Container World uh, is? Like, is it uh, booth centric or do they do talks? Or is it a waste of time, which is always another option? <laughs> Could be. Um, I'll, I'll look into it. I, I mean, the, the, the container world one, I mean, I'm not necessarily the, the most up on the, the, the container um, circuit, but I've never come across that before. So I, that's why I say it may be a waste of time. Uh, if it, 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 we'd have to do some investigation to make sure it's worth our effort. Um, yeah, that was something, I mean, these last two are things that were suggested by some of the other participants in the community. Um, and I know, I, I seem to recall that the MPLS SDN World Conference was spoken up highly, if that's your thing. Yeah, that, that one's been going for years and is, um, it's, I see it's lost its IPv6, but um, it is certainly going to have plenty of service providers in if we can get to it. Um, Ed asked me to put one in for ONS since it's like two miles from the front door of our office um, and uh, it gets me a free ticket as well, which is always a bonus. Um, so I'll see if I can put something together for that on the NFE side of the world because um, if we can talk containers and NFE setting aside NSM, then people get very excited. Yeah, and, and I would encourage folks, particularly for KubeCon EU, but for, uh, for, all, for all these things, I would encourage people to please uh, submit talks. I know we've got a lot of people doing a lot of interesting things. Um, you know, that I think would probably be of interest to people at these conferences. Yeah, also Ed, we had that um, that document in KubeCon that we were thinking of opening up to uh, to the community. So perhaps we should uh, push that onto here so people can add the talks that they're discussing and tell them about it. Give me one second to go find it and share again, one second. Cool. And this will lead in directly into our first agenda meeting, which is call for paper ideas. So I'll get started with a couple that um, uh, that we're putting together and to talk about the core NSM. So we will redo the talks uh, that we did over in the last KubeCon, and we're going to submit them to o to ONS in San Jose for intro and deep dive to network service mesh. In mm -hmm. KubeCon, we're going to also push the same uh, set of talks, but we also intend to add in, uh, we also tend to do 
more uh, deep dives on specific areas that we're that we're looking at. So one of them, and we'll talk about it later later on, is going to be uh, what is it? What would it, uh, I, I'm working on an Envoy network uh, service, and so uh, what would um, what can you do once you have Envoy as like as a as a network service and to push that in as a talk and also intending to do a network service mesh uh, update as uh, update talk as well. Um, yeah, there, there's the edges. Yeah, we were going to reach out to Tim Swanson on that as well, if I recall, and I certainly didn't do it myself. Um, we should do that this week. And I'm going to jump to the CFP ideas uh, doc right now, just so we can all see it. Perfect. <laughs> So, were you, were you walking through that doc when you were talking about ideas? I I was talking about stuff that I uh, that I remembered from uh, okay. from that talk. Yeah. And, um, and... Anyway, so so this these are the ones that we intend to put in for for KubeCon. Uh, remains to be seen how many of them will will get in, uh, but these are the ones that we that will submit. Uh, we also recommend that uh, if you have an idea that you want to put down, uh, add them, add them down here as well. And the, the two reasons for adding them in is first, uh, if you want to have someone help you deliver the talk, um, this would be a good community to make that happen. And the second reason is it also gives us some view, some view as to everything that's going on with the talks and, uh, uh, and I and Nikolai can uh, help with uh, any resources or, or so on in order to make sure that uh, uh, that the talk is successful. So we want to make sure that right. the attention in order in order to be successful. So, so glad you're uh, at, ON, at ONS, I was um, I was planning on putting one in, um, and I haven't read through this document yet. But but effectively, something saying this is how you would apply. Uh, NSM to NFV because most of the things we talked about and particularly the stuff we were talking about at KubeCon was very enterprise centric and I think that's the right audience to start talking about fast networking with uh, an NFV viewpoint on top. I, I think that's actually super valuable. One of the, 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 the things that we've done in a lot of the public talks, particularly at KubeCon, is we've on the enterprise cases mostly because if I talk about something like Sarah's story, um, and there are NFV people in the audience, they immediately get how this might be something interesting for them. Um, whereas... Yeah, but, but I mean, it, it piques their interest and they can see that this is possible for what they're doing. But I think um, uh, we need to kind of um, tie this to NFV directly as opposed to sort of taunting them and teasing them with hints. And, uh, and again, ONS is fantastically good for reaching service providers. So um, that should work out quite nicely. And then we can recycle it where appropriate. If you would have given me 15 more seconds, I was, I was in the process of violently agreeing with you. OK, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so cool. So I mean, we, you, you had mentioned that you were talking, you were planning on doing a talk about connecting um, Envoy sidecar pods. Um, you can connect application service mesh to network service mesh. I think we probably need to do a general update talk um, just to update the community. And then, Nikolai, you had one that you were thinking of here? Um, yep, I tried to put some abstracts the way that I think it should like look like and a little bit of benefits to community. So, yeah, it's uh, mostly about how you call the uh, network service and how you can put together a full solution using the SDK and you know all the nice tools that we will have by May. Cool, awesome. Um, then I think the next one we had sort of brainstormed a little bit was um, sort of how to deploy network service mesh in your Kubernetes cluster. Um, in some sense where, where Nikolai's talk on coding a network service is focused at sort of network service endpoint developers, this one is sort of focused on people who are actually running a Kubernetes cluster. Um, in other words, how do you de deploy this thing and how do you sort of do the operational tasks that one might do? And hopefully we should be able to do this mm -hmm. by, you know, by then on all the major public cloud providers. Um, so, which is also a good thing to be showing. Yeah, I would just like to, to say that, that this would be super useful to have this, you know, on video so that everyone can see because we get a lot of questions like, okay, how do, how do I do this out of, you know, 
the vagrant that you you supply. Yeah. So uh, mm. yeah. I completely agree with you. The other nice thing about this is this sort of towards operational stuff. We can also use this to show some of the things like you know the, the topology that that Matthew has done. We could sort of how to debug uh, things. So this would probably include showing somebody operating this. You know, okay, this is where we've got open tracing. So if you're seeing a problem, you can try and figure out what's going on. Um, that kind of stuff. How far have we got open tracing to ask a silly question? Yes. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't gone looking at the code terribly much, so I have to ask. Yeah, no, we, we have it's, a thing. It's super exciting. Yeah, it's, it's very recent. If you looked a few weeks ago, uh, you may have seen some in progress code, but it wasn't really there. So it's, uh, we, we, we now have open tracing. Yeah. Oh, that's useful. Okay. I believe yeah, since no. since yesterday. <laughs> it's slightly well, the, the reason I say that's useful is because I mean, trying to debug big moving system, uh, big distributed systems with moving parts is a complete nightmare unless unless you have that. But it's usually the last so, thing to arrive. So it's all good stuff. It sounds like we need an additional agenda item. Does anyone want to talk about that? About which thing? Um, open tracing and network service mesh. I was maybe, maybe a useful thing for next week, honestly. It looks like we've got plenty to talk about now, but um, it would be useful to get an update. Yeah, so um, I know that the, the Andre Platov had done the open tracing stuff. Andre, do you want to talk about this next week? Uh, yes, sure. Awesome. Perfect. It is super cool. I'm, I'm, I'm generally of the opinion at this point that tracing is much, much better than logging. <laughs> yes, it is. If you want to find problems, it certainly is. Um, awesome. So then we've also got, um, so we talked about the playing and then there was all, when we sort of looked at the audience, um, it occurred to us that we may also want to do a talk about sort of how this would look to you as an application developer, if you're consuming it. Um, you know, that sort of hits the three major audiences. So you're writing networky things or so you're running a Kubernetes cluster or you're, run, you're running an app and you just want what Sarah wants, right? You want the secure internet connectivity. Um, and then you would put these down here at the bottom, uh, Frederick. Did you want to talk a little, little bit about that? Sure. I don't have a screen, so if you can... Oh, the, this is the community contributed pieces. Oh, yeah. So the Open Daylight community is um, putting together a NSM Neutron uh, integration demo showing uh, Kubernetes and, and OpenStack sharing a Neutron network. <laughs> so I'm in the process of helping them uh, work out exactly exactly what that means uh, and helping them with specking out the, the work for, the, for that demo. But it should be a very, from network service mesh side, uh, it should be a minimal amount of work because we already have things to wire you into a data plane. And, uh, and I suggested that they start off with BPP on, on the Kubernetes side, and then they can wrap in a Neutron-based uh, network with OVS and a VM in the OpenStack world. And uh, basically, the only thing they'd have to tie in is a, is a uh, VXLAN uh, a port that uh, returns the parameters, and then we just connect to it. So it should be a very simple integration, but show something that would be very in line with uh, with uh, showing the the service provider and telco world that uh, like with with what's possible. Uh, are we here a Kubernetes cluster running running next to OpenStack because the the use cases are different? Sorry, can you repeat that? Are you running within? You're, you're breaking yeah. up rather a lot, Ian. I, I don't know that we can hear you. I oh okay. Let me let me just try moving close to the base station. Are you thinking about a um, uh, a Kubernetes cluster running on top of OpenStack in virtual machines or next door to OpenStack on the same networks? Uh, next door, because the on top of is already handled by Courier, and Courier does a really mm -hmm. fantastic job with that. Uh, well, uh, let's let's be clear, right? Courier does a fantastic job for certain use cases, but um, these are not necessarily the same use cases. But that's why I was asking. But okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So that. Yep. So, so that, what they're setting up is a is a cluster on the side, 
and it's just it's not going to be running ODL in the in the Kubernetes cluster itself. It'll be running uh, NSM. And what I recommended to them, and it's up to them, uh, but what I recommended to them was that they run a standard Kubernetes uh, CNI uh, that's that's well known, and mm -hmm. then pull in NSM to negotiate the connection with a Neutron uh, ENSM uh, that is ran within with that is implemented in ODL, and uh, basically returns back some VXLAN parameters and and makes the uh, makes the connection. So, just keeping it very, very simple for them, but some but shows off a very important uh, the start of a very important integration. Okay, so that was my question actually. So uh, the, this whole architecture envisions actually to have the very first implementation of an external NS manager, right? Because we didn't have it up till now. Yeah. Yeah, it, it very well. It very well could be. I'm not aware of any other ENSMs, oh, okay. so this could be the first one and. Great. One of the things that we may want to do with them, so if they, if they decide to move forward and it looks like they're going to, then they're going to need some help with the, with the Java. Uh, basically, they're, they're, they write everything in Java uh, for the most part. And so it makes sense for the, for the ENSM to be in Java. So this could be the start of, a, of an ENSM SDK, Java SDK on our side in order to help uh, okay. Java-based SDNs or Java-based developers uh, start writing these type of things out. Uh, and I actually think that this is gonna lead into a more, uh, into something else, which is that we, like the same way that we're doing a, an SDK for the NFC, we also wanna make sure that the, uh, the network service endpoint providers also get some love and attention as well across, uh, across the board. Yeah, we, we want to be careful with that because there's exactly one Java-based SDN controller, really, which is ODL itself. Um, I, I'm not necessarily uh, saying that we shouldn't help them. We certainly should. But uh, uh, I think we ought to know our scope. And our scope is probably not to write that code for them, but to tell them to, you know, give instructions that somebody could use in a different language in the future. Because I think that would be more valuable than, than jumping in with an ODL-based solution. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. I think what it really is going to come down to is patterns, uh, which is part of why I'm kind of excited yeah. to some of the SDK work that Nikolai has to show us towards the end here. Because I, I think <clears throat> the same kind of patterns that you're building for the SDK on our side for writing NSEs probably would be super healthy patterns for them to be following um, on the ODL side. And humans are patterning and painting machines. So just being able to point them at a good pattern um, is a really cheap and really powerful trick. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, that's that's more in line with with my thoughts. So I want I want them to do the bulk of the of the um, work. When it comes down to some of the nuances with the with the ENSM, one of the reasons to be more involved with them in this scenario is is also is going to be a learning side from us. So where where are yeah. the deficiencies with uh, ENSM from a community who is not looked at NSM very much. Like they're aware of it and they're excited about it, but they haven't really looked at the details. And so this becomes a very valuable use point for us because regardless of what language you use, there's gonna be uh, like, mm. how do you build that ENSM uh, and how do, you, how do you work with it? Like they'll, they'll be the, assuming they do it, they, they, they'll, be, they'll be the first people to run into any issues as well. And yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, uh, our job here, I think, is, is not to learn how to write open daylight code, but our job is here is to learn how to teach because this is the skill we're going to need. Exactly, and, so that's, Prem, and that's why you want it. Prem was on the call earlier. He's now at Lumina, who is ODL. So <coughs> we can yep. suck him in to help or? He's, he's involved, so yes. okay, we, we, we have we have some good conversations on on that but uh yeah if prim, if prim is on right now and wants to add more to it like definitely you know definitely feel free to, free to do he's he's not on his thing he wasn't he wasn't uh, he's on the list of people oh no that was last week oops sorry <laughs> no worries <laughs> that's okay that's okay um yeah i'll 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 circle back with him i i have his phone number and i'll i'll let him know what we spoke about here and that he was invoked <laughs> Cool. So um, we've got another one here that, that Matthew added about yes. describing how you use develop the NSM Provence Guide. Do you want to say a few words with you? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, 
So we talked about this uh, before about uh, you, you you asked me uh, if I want to submit a talk about uh, how to uh, to do the visualization stuff uh, for NSM, especially in skydive. So uh, I think I will uh, submit a talk about that if it's cool. okay with you. Mm -hmm. And I think I will uh, I will submit this talk with the skydive team. They are, they are okay with that. I, I, no, I think that's a very, very cool idea. Um, if I could make one suggestion about the wording on the title, just to make it punchier, you know, mm -hmm. if you, you sort of go with visualizing network service meshes with skydive, um, it sort of puts visualize front and center. Um, and I think probably that'll scan better for the people reviewing talks because it's got visualize and mesh. So all kinds of goodness. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I will put the abstract and the title in this document and uh, let you give us some advice about, uh, about the best way to, to have uh, the, oh, yeah. the people. Please, please only take my advice as advice. Um, I'm wrong about as often as I'm right. So, okay. <laughs> cool. No, I'm super excited about that. Uh, anyone else have something they'd like to go and, and, you know, pull together a talk for? Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Just one quick note uh, on the skydive stuff. So uh, I don't know if you were there at KubeCon or not. Uh, when I did the NSM uh, coding, uh, the, the six minute CNF, Skydive was absolutely fantastic at showing people what was going on and the topology changes. So it was incredibly, incredibly powerful. So like, I think this kind of talk get, gets accepted will, uh, will be good. Will, will be, an, will be a good thing overall. Okay. Yeah, uh, and there, there are so many cool things yet that you could do. Um, so yeah, it's only getting better with time. Yeah. And all my coding examples that I use in the future that have, to show off any topology, which should be everyone, every one of them in NSM, I fully intend to use Skydive to to show off what's going on in the background. So, uh, I was just giving you the heads up on that. Great, thank you. Okay, well, if anyone comes up with any uh, with any other ideas that you want to present, uh, since the call for paper is at the end of this work week. Uh, if you need help or want some some help with the wording or anything like that, get a hold of me. Get a hold of Ed, and we'll we'll help you as as well if you'd like that help. So like I know there, there's very very limited time. So uh, so again, this uh, this Friday is the is the due date. Cool. Great. So moving on to the next topic. Uh, we're going to head back to the 2019 roadmap brainstorm. So uh, please check the document on there. This is a first iteration. The intention of this document is not to be the roadmap. It is to brainstorm for what will become the roadmap and that roadmap will live in the GitHub repo. So if there's anything that you would like to see, uh, don't worry about whether it's uh, whether it makes 100% sense or not added here because so there will be further discussions around it in terms of like, what does it mean and prioritization and so on. So uh, to use the agile word, there'll be a lot of grooming of these, uh, of, of these things. Uh, so the other thing I do want to make sure is also super clear. This is one of the wonderful things about open source, um, which is roadmaps are inclusive, not exclusive. So, you know, if there is some feature here that you really are excited about, um, then, you know, so long as it's not going to derail everything, uh, you can work on that, even if no one else is as excited about it as you are. Um, so, yeah, definitely inclusivity on the roadmap stuff. Absolutely. Be the change in NSM you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, Nikolai, I'll let you uh, drive since you're listed as the, um, as the uh, head on this one. Uh, okay, uh, can I share my screen possibly? No, oh, I you cannot. Absolutely, you absolutely can. Let me stop sharing and you can share. <clears throat> I, I share as a public service, not because I terribly am a big fan of sharing. Um, okay, let me see here. Sharing, sharing, sharing. That should be it. Okay, you see my screen? Yep. Uh, good, so uh, 
Uh, whatever we have today uh, uh, in this document, I could split it uh, into main uh, chapters. So the first one, which is called here a brainstorm, uh, to me is more like a feature list or a wish list of things that we want to see. Uh, and the second part here is uh, uh, I try to give an example of uh, what would what we can do as a kind of roadmap plus milestones table where we can set some <coughs> some targets with specific months, okay, if not dates. Um, so um, uh, from the top, starting from the top, I think that one of that's actually I put this CI/CD on, on on the very top. I think that this is maybe one of the most um, important thing, at least from my point of view. I would really like to have uh, a way to be able to run um, uh, NSM in a larger scale, in a continuous integration, continuous de 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 deployment manner. We currently have a uh, packet, which is great, uh, but it's still down to, to notes from what I know. Uh, and uh, it would be really great if we if we are able to test more like a bigger environment, uh, cross cloud, uh, cross domain uh, deployments, larger uh, network service uh, uh, network services because currently the the most uh, complex one is the uh, internet uh, security, the secure internet, which is kind of just two NECs. And we don't really have something bigger than that. Yeah, I mean, uh, some, something we, something that I think makes this gives us a lot more options as we look at this because I think this is actually a really important thing. Mm -hmm. Gives us a lot more options on this. Is um, I don't know how many folks noticed going in the integration test work that um, Andre Sobolev did, um, but effectively we now have some really slick Go-based integration testing, and um, in, in addition to everything else, it's super good about cleaning up after itself. So. <laughs> You know, right now we have a situation where we basically, you know, we start from a, a completely new, fresh cluster. And part of why we do that is sort of reproducibility, but part of it also is making sure that, you know, we, we you know, we, we know that we don't have something hanging around because we're not entirely certain of how well we clean up after ourselves with our integration tests. Um, so you could imagine running a, a somewhat larger cluster and then just deploying things to that larger cluster. Um, and, and seeing them work with some of the integration test work that's that's going on. Yeah, um, so that's that's actually super important. <clears throat> um, and uh, if we if we have this, this could even help uh, you know in presentations like uh, the uh, ONS or KubeCon because uh, if you have something running at a larger scale, you can very easily just go there, show skydive or you know something that kind of is more impressive. <clears throat> um, uh, further down, I don't know if we need to go through all the through all the things, but maybe quickly. So we have the auto reconnect with all the auto healing upgrades, uh, rewiring, all, all the things, because today we, we have more or less uh, some, some kind of a static de deployment that are not really dynamic uh, in that sense. Um, we have uh, currently what is it uh, admission controller interdomain so all the all the all the ideas that were discussed in one way or another uh, so the proxy uh, ns uh, uh, managers and external ns managers with some examples that that we might be able to or we might want to provide for for folks what are the other, the what are the other with admission controllers by the way is so admission controllers are, are sort of in some sense a, 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 an interesting thing to pick up um, and get your feet wet with because um, for an admission controller, you, you don't have to sort of get immediately into the guts of something like the NSMD. Um, all it really does is it says, okay, I'm going to look at the pods coming in and if they match some criteria, then I'm going to stick in the bits that I need for network service mesh. Um, so if somebody's looking for a starter problem, um, that's probably a nice starter problem. Mm -hmm. Um. Yep. Uh, then further down, so as we, as we mentioned, uh, proxy network service managers and external network service managers, we have these on slides today. Uh, obviously, there's some work going on in the community, although in different languages, but still, uh, if we are able to provide some example code or something that, that can be 
there to help people, you know, uh, integrate and uh, do, do, do great, the great things that we actually promise uh, in our presentations. That would be super good. I don't know how important is that. You probably need to kind of vote or uh, try to s score somehow all these things, but it's an interesting thing. Uh, debugability, debugability and deployability. So these are all the before, things. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, before, before we move on with that one. So for the ENSM, uh, the Hello World version of that would be to do something like an ICMP responder, just show the connectivity even works. So uh, something like that would be like relatively Rel relatively easy for people to pick up and then build up from there. Yeah, but you still need to have the manager uh, talking to some different API or hardware or whatever is there. Yeah, absolutely. And there's yeah. there's work that we'll need to do uh, further down mm -hmm. with uh, the domain stuff, or inner mm -hmm. domain stuff that'll help make this a lot easier as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, all the, the nice things that we have. So we have the open tracing to, to today. I guess that uh, we should just start using it and see if it needs some improvements. So I don't know, for the time being, from what I can tell, it basically plugs in all the gRPC calls. Uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, all that we can do with, uh, with open tracing. Maybe there are other uh, it, it will do, um, if, if you get it right, it will do internal calls and it will do inter-component calls perfectly well and it doesn't really care whether they're gRPC or some other protocol. So it, it, it's fully flexible. You can do all of that in gRPC. I'm not saying you can do it all with what you have, but, but those are the capabilities it's good for. Okay. So, for instance, in, in OpenStack, um, I don't think they usually use it for stack traces, but they certainly use it for uh, messages across Rabbit, for instance, which are generally RPCs of a different form. Oh, okay, good. So, so if we're doing any protocol like that, then it's good for that as well. Um, and it might be a good idea to, uh, as we come up with examples of, 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 um, uh, of NSM in use, show how you would join the system call up from an external service trying to get something done so that the the um, event trace runs all the way through. Um, and that would involve uh, making sure you've got a means of passing an external identifier into NSM and carrying it through the open trace uh, call. Because, you know, you called this for a reason. It might not even be the only NSM call you made for that reason. So uh, in order to actually tie the whole thing together, you need an external identifier that, that tells you what's going on. Yeah. So, Sorry, um, I was looking at Open Trace yesterday. So. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's cool. I mean, there, there, there's a ton of stuff you can do with Open Tracing. I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I sort of joked that, that tracing is much, much better than logging. I, I'm actually sort of like, you know, poking around a little trying to figure out um, how much of, of what, what's done in logging should probably be handled with tracing instead um, in the system. And I, my guess is quite a lot of it, um, but we shall see. Okay. So uh, there's this uh, idea about the IOAM, which uh, actually sounds like super exciting. And I know that uh, something related to this and uh, general statistics and telemetry is uh, somehow discussed with Matthew already and uh, Skydive. Uh, these things, of course, would be very, very, very useful to anyone trying to deploy this in practice, because we all know how it is when you start running it live. <clears throat> Security is a very, very important topic, which I think that we are kind of underestimating up till now. We need to have a stronger message about it, I believe, because people will start asking questions and we are a little bit uh, hand waving <laughs> today, and we definitely need to uh, find I, I, some. I think that's definitely true, and and I mean it would be good if, if folks have friends who are really good on the security front because there's certain aspects of it that again we can whisper <laughs> waver and say, well, um, GRPC gives us lots of tools for handling authentication and authorization, right? And it does. We just aren't using any of them properly yet, um, and so we should. And and security is sort of its own twist of mind. Yeah, so it is. One, uh, mm. one way to convince your friends to join in is uh, if they're security minded is you can potentially show them the value proposition from a uh, from a career perspective where if they're early in at this point, they will be one of the top experts when this thing is really flying and uh, <laughs> people are going to need to have their systems reviewed for for security holes and so on and they would be 
they they would have they they should have some good visibility uh, by by the time that this starts to to really take off. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there are the the next couple of points here: uh, the more uh, more remote mechanisms, and further down on the next page, hardware NICs. I think that these are somehow tied into the CI/CD lab or whatever we have there, because I'm not sure it's an easy thing to set up uh, all these things uh, with whatever we have today. Uh, so, I mean, it sort of can be done. I, the, 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 the thing here is that, and, and we should be able to use network service mesh to allow people to take advantage of things like SRIO V port, uh, SRIO mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, making, treating the Tor port on a switch as a network service endpoint, um, yep. you know, and <laughs> the other one I added here was the AFXDP thing. And I added it, it's a little early on AFXDP. It's just getting its legs under it. It's super exciting. Uh, this will literally allow you to copy packets directly into user space memory uh, from the kernel, from an arbitrary uh, kernel driver. So it, it makes all kinds of interesting things possible there. Um, but the, the trick with the AFXDP thing is mostly that it's quite a bit different than using DPDK to grab an SRIO VVF. So I added it there just so we think about it enough that we don't paint ourselves into a corner where we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. practically speaking, uh, I can tell you from past experience, um, the number of interfaces or the type of interface that gets you packets varies over time. We have to anticipate that the well, ones we have to play with today are not the ones that we'll always have. So, um, I, And I don't think that's built into what we're doing, but this is just another means of, of getting packets in. Yep, agreed. I mean, it, we're obsessively focused on getting packets in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the other important thing here is uh, more payloads. So um, you know, showing up at ONS and uh, showing the IP-based demo uh, wouldn't be that uh, that much interesting. Uh, I mean, if we if we are able to show um, Kubernetes deployment uh, and MPoS interconnection between pods, that would be really really great thing for the telco guys, right? Uh, and GTP, of course, is. I guess that there are also others, but we just have this as a kind of example. If someone is interested in something else, there, there is, there is yeah, no. that, that that one's going to lead into the architecture conversation that I stuck in with with no clues. But um, mm -hmm. the simple fact is that uh, if you're doing if you're playing games with MPLS and friends, then you need to be certain that your infrastructure is going to transit MPLS versus you know a switch certainly won't. It will throw it away. Mm -hmm. So so I think. That's a slightly broader conversation about how we how we paint a picture where that works, but I absolutely agree it's important. Please note here we're talking in this case we're talking. So there are two sets of things. One is talking about it as a remote mechanism, which is sort of okay, you know, and that's where your topic is very germane. And the next one is talking yeah. about payload, um, which is you know if you're a network service endpoint that says if you're a network service that takes MPLS payload and you don't take an MPLS payload, something that is way beyond network service mesh has gone wrong, right? Um, um, that much is true, but but again, we, we can talk about this a bit more in a moment because it, it's got broader picture. It, it, it paints broader uh, or has broader implications than um, than just talking about can I ask for MPLS? It's more complicated than that, but but okay. it's still um, interesting. Mm -hmm. No, no, this is all fair. This is all fair. Uh, okay, we have just a couple more, so let's try to go quickly over there. So uh, we have the. The create verb idea, which is super cool, uh, maybe not that, that high. Um, can we can please put some actual text to that? We keep talking about the create verb, and I've not even managed to get Ed to explain it yet. There um, is just somebody big, write a bloody yeah. wiki wiki page, and there's a, there's a video on YouTube about it. <laughs> there's, there's actually yeah, a and that's lovely. Can and when I say text, I actually literally mean text. Can we have some text which I can read in ten minutes versus a video which I won't ever find time to watch? Can you give me one second. I will actually, you know, put a link around that because there's an issue on Create Verb. Um, okay, that's good. Give me one second, um, and I will get that into there. Yeah, yeah and, and and just for some uh, bookkeeping. So the intention is that all of these things uh, that we're talking about that uh, that end up in the roadmap. Uh, we're going to create uh, uh, GitHub issues around uh, each of them, and they're going to. Yeah. We're going to have what the GitHub issue. The first one that's going to be created is to create a spec 
for that uh, for that thing, whatever whatever it is. So that way that we can get people to to work on it and have a clear view as to as to what it is. So if it's that screen verb right now, um, don't like don't stress too much about it. It'll it'll uh, be fully spec'd out by by the time that it comes that it comes down to to implementing. Mm -hmm. So and, and we encourage people to get involved with uh, with that as well. So they'll so we'll make sure that it's clear how, how to do so at, when we when we start putting them out. Um, okay, we also have the CNCF uh, becoming a CNCF project as an uh, on our roadmap this year, I guess. Uh, and not sure what is this uh, GA group migration. Uh, oh, G G GitHub. GitHub. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, this is something that that I guess that is somehow underway, uh, and uh, I guess that these are more or less tied together, like CNCF and uh, GitHub group migration. Well, somehow, uh, we talked about Envoy. This is something that. Uh, Fred is already looking into. Yeah, uh, alternative data planes. So there were some discussions and uh, questions around this. So we have currently OVS and Kernel as a kind of candidates, uh, being able to demonstrate that uh, the project is not entirely VPP bound, although maybe VPP is superior in some ways for some IOM or I don't know. Who, well, well, to be fair, that, that's a, a case that we should make one way or the other, and that's easier made if we've got alternatives. Um, yeah. You know, we want, if you want to prove that VPP is superior, you want to do it with tests. You don't want to do it with statement. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. the other thing is we've been super, super careful um, in the architecture to try and make sure that we're not welded to any particular data plane. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean there is like different jobs better than others, but it also doesn't mean that every data plane can do all the things, right? So, for example, Last time I checked, you couldn't do SRD simply us. That doesn't mean you can't never service mesh. It just means that if your data plane is OVS based, then you're not going to be able to use an SRV6 remote mechanism until yeah. OVS supports it. And that's a totally valid thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole point about this, and again, right, if we take VPP and OVS, it may well be that, that if what you're mostly doing is supplying things as uh, kernel interfaces to containers, then kernel-based OVS is a better solution for you. Um, but I think more importantly, and again, coming back to test proves things, whereas statements don't, then if we want to be data plane agnostic, we're never actually going to know that we are data plane agnostic until we try a second data plane. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, I think that I have uh, put this one that we Today, our demon set VPP, uh, uh, the data plane demon set actually relies on CNI to do inter interhost oh, interhost connectivity, and maybe we would like to prove that we can go without CNI at some point. Um, what, yeah, I think project? that's probably interesting because um, one thing here that's a possibility in the long term is that this is a platform on which the CNI runs. So if you need the CNI to make this work, to make the CNI work, we end up with trouble. So yeah. it, it, it's just a thought. Mm -hmm. One thing here, maybe oh, Joe. Oh. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. I was just making a snide remark. <laughs> OK. Um, what about public cloud? I mean, we're very much focused here on data planes that run in, in mm. private cloud. I mean, public cloud well, I, is. is I, I've is in the past. Am yeah, I in the past. To it or not? I don't know. No, it is. Uh, in the past, I've had, and, and it comes, in some regards, it comes back to test frameworks that we can use as well. I've run VPP in AWS. In fact, I do run VPP in AWS. Uh, it involves um, touching your nose, standing on one leg, and doing very, very weird things with um, the way it steals NICs. Um, and it's not cheap. you have a video of that? <laughs> uh, what, me standing on one leg and touching my nose? Yeah, I can probably find you one of those, actually. There's almost certainly one on YouTube somewhere. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it does work. You can make it work. Um, so if we can get, uh, and theoretically, um, and as Ed was reminding me of this earlier in the week, um, this should be a thing that just deploys on any Kubernetes. Now, that's not quite true, because obviously it expects certain bits of hardware to be around, because it's got to have its own means of moving packets around. But... Um, 
uh, or, or at least it's got to, you, you know, pull some packets off of the interface it's got. But, but theoretically, if we're doing this right, then it should deploy on a, a Kubernetes in AWS. Um, which is your public cloud use case, and if it works in AWS, it works anywhere. So, but it, yeah. making it easy, I think, is is a challenge. I mean, yeah, we're yeah. getting. Yeah, I, I know we get beat up, you know, um, for not making it easy in public cloud because that's. What, I, I haven't know. got. I, I haven't got a test framework today, or or a test deployment today, because I can't use Vagrant. So anything that is not Vagrant that lets me run this thing is is actually a marvel. So absolutely, I think this is necessary. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, and, and by the way, I'm, I think I'm probably the one who wrote the data plane that does not rely on the CNI connectivity. So let me sort of, let me sort of be super clear about that. Right now in network service mesh, the VPP agent data plane does something that is pretty much guaranteed to always work. Um, yeah. It is not guaranteed to perform super fast. And that is that it runs its VXLAN tunnels off of the interface that it gets from CNI. Why? We know every freaking pod will always get an interface from CNI and it will be able to reach every other pod in the system at L3 from that interface, right? Because that's promised to us. Now, this is great for developers. It's great for, I want to make sure this runs everywhere. If you want to try and run lots of traffic through that um, at high speeds, you're going to discover that running through a kernel interface is super slow. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what I meant by that. We're, right now we're doing the right thing at this stage. And for certain use cases, it will always be the right thing. Um, but there are other ways that we might be able to, uh, you know, for example, be able to hook up to a DPDK interface or an AFX DP mm. interface, or something else. That, 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 so I, I, I put a point in, and I see we've only got 10 minutes left, so I'm not sure we're going to get to it. I put in the point in there that basically says architecture and gives no clues whatsoever. And the reason I put that in there is I think we're missing a few tricks. And one of them is that... Um, the physical interfaces are in their own way um, network service endpoints. So they, you know, they supply packets. They talk to something. That thing does networking. It has opinions about how it does networking. So if it's a switch, it does networking in one way, and MPLS isn't going to work. If it's a router, it does networking in a different way. And if you expect forwarding to work the way it normally works, then that's not going to get you anywhere. And if it's uh, if it's AWS, it works in a third way, which is different again. So um, I, I think. Um, in that regard, if we can, uh, you know, it's not going to happen now, but if we can have a conversation about uh, how to deal with network services where we've got a control plane that, that talks the APIs that we're, we're talking about for network services and a data plane which may or may not actually live in a container for starters and how to work with a, a slightly more um, Lego building block kind of form of the world where everything has a fairly you know, there are lots of very similar components of a very general shape. Um, then I think we can make more progress with that. Because again, and, and this I've said to Ed and Frederick, um, but maybe not in the wider audience, I think data planes, as we've designed them today, data planes are a form of network service. And they're not just a form of network service, but they build on other network services to get their job done. Yep. Cool. cool. So anyway, we are running a little short on time. So let's let's get back to sort of the rest of what Nicolai wanted to talk about here. Um, yeah, quick, quickly. So we, um, I think that I wrote this one. This is kind of pro proposal to have more complete story about different use cases, because I believe that uh, NSM is a little bit more than whatever we showed to today. Uh, but yeah, this is probably a broader discussion. Uh, and someone added here uh, to change the dependency management with co vendor, which probably makes more sense but yeah, we need to look into it uh then uh quickly the table here so i have put just kind of the, the dates here my idea was to have a date like a month uh then we have some naming which we have to figure out for a kind of uh point release or something like that uh we can somehow put some features that we choose for this release and eventually we can attach an event to it where we can you know announce and say okay so this is our release we can promote it or whatever we want to do there uh so that's it i don't know if we have to discuss something else the document is here please add your notes add your ideas and maybe we'll have to do some iterations over it before we get to some final <coughs> roadmap yeah and to be clear yeah. like I put the link there. Anybody should be able to edit that to edit the the this brainstorming doc because we want to try and gather um, ideas from as broad a community of folks as we can. 
Yeah, feel <laughs> feel free to add to it. Like even even if you're unsure, like you think there's something there, but you're not sure if it's a good fit. Like feel free to add to it because it's better that we, it's better that we uh, turn down things knowingly rather than not include something important because of, of ignorance. Mm -hmm. So feel, so feel free to edit it. There's there's no there's no judgment or anything like that. Uh, if uh, if you put something down that uh, that you think is may or may not be a good a good fit. So we would prefer that you add it in. Definitely. Okay, then we have five minutes. I'm stopping my sharing and we probably can move on.